a price warning for iron ore, an $800 million payday for Clive Palmer, and TikTok calls its American users to arms against the US government. Welcome to Trading Up, a collaboration by the West Australian and Graffer. I'm Colin Ebsworth. This episode is brought to you by Stake, Australia's most recommended broker. Are investors feeling cautiously optimistic that the banking crisis is over? If the surging price of oil is anything to go by, then yes. As a rule of thumb, oil prices trend higher when the economy looks good and they go down when things get ugly. Shares of Woodside are certainly looking good today. They've risen to a six month high. Beach Energy is also very attractive today with a 5% gain and Contact Energy isn't looking too bad either. If you're into oil and gas that is. But a blow for the iron ore miners with the Commonwealth Bank today warning the iron ore price will slump to just a measly $100 a ton by the end of this year. That's down from about $120 a ton today, which is still at a five week low. The CBA is predicting China's demand for steel is going to ease over the coming months. Meanwhile, Queenslander Clive Palmer is banking about $800 million a year thanks to royalties from WA's iron ore. Big Clive's privately held company Mineralogy had to show its accounts to the corporate regulator. The former real estate agent showed he is really good at picking property, with the slice of land in WA earning probably the highest rental yield in the country. Yeah. And it's payday for shareholders of KMD Brands. That's the company behind surf brands Rip Curl and Kathmandu. The company has announced a record half year profit and an interim dividend. So what was behind this record profit? Well, after being cooped up for so long, people are finally going traveling. They're climbing mountains and boys, the annual surf trip is definitely back on. And the bros who are behind an Australian company that claims to make the world's strongest jeans are expanding to activewear. The company Saint says their jeans are 200 times stronger than denim. So as it turns out, this same group of dudes set up a global activewear brand called 2XU and their non-compete has expired. So they are taking on the company they sold out of with their new line. <laughs> And the social media juggernaut TikTok is calling on its 150 million American users against the US government. The CEO of the Chinese app is appearing before the US lawmakers in Congress tomorrow in a showdown, which comes amid a congressional threat of a ban of the platform. Again. More than 150 million Americans are on TikTok. That's almost half of the US coming to TikTok. I'll be testifying before Congress later this week to share all that we're doing to protect Americans using the app. Let me know in the comments what you want your elected representatives to know about what you love about TikTok. American TikTokers are also challenging lawmakers saying they see TikTok as a platform for freedom of speech. This is the only place where Americans can post and learn about current events going on within the country and content that otherwise would be suppressed by social media applications owned by American companies. One thing is for sure, there's one hell of a storm brewing or buffering. You can find more business news content on thewest.com.au or to see all the data and insights behind this video, check out graffa.com. Thanks for joining me on this special episode of Trading Up. I'm Colin Ebsworth. See you next time.